Welcome to the All Out Leadership Podcast, hosted by Pastor Eric Lawson, where each episode is uniquely designed to help you live all out by bringing you practical leadership from a biblical perspective delivered in 10 minutes or less. So whether you're a business leader, serving in ministry, or simply looking to grow in your leadership, this podcast is for you. Before we dive into this week's topic, make sure to subscribe to the podcast and download the show notes at ericlawson.com forward slash podcast. And while you're at it, feel free to share the content on social media. Now, let's join Pastor Eric for this week's conversation. Welcome back to another All Out Leadership Podcast. We're continuing with David's inauguration. Last week, we looked at the first 90 days of leadership. And I'm going to camp on this passage for the next few podcasts because there's just so much rich leadership inside of that. And that's what I love about these podcasts is we're really going deeper inside of the Word of God than we can maybe in a weekend environment where I can kind of just keep unpacking and mining some really great truths, even just from small passages like this. So I'm going to call this one today, Don't Play the God Card. I'm going to say that again. Don't play the God card very often, okay? Uh, What we see David doing here is he has an idea. He has something inside of his heart. We don't know, but God might even said, I'd like you to bring the ark back. We don't know that. But the way David brought this idea to the team is he goes, hey, I was thinking, uh, you know, hey, what do you guys think about? I think we should bring the ark back. And he got everybody's opinion on that. We don't see David very often just going, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, this is what he said. We, we don't necessarily see him doing that. Now, if anybody had the right to pull the God card as a leader and say, hey, we're going to bring the Ark of God back to Jerusalem because that's where it belongs and because God told me and that's how it's going to be. He could have done that, but he didn't, again, because he was highly emotional, intelligent leader. And we rarely see David uh, ever just pulling the God card saying, hey, appreciate your opinion, but this is what God said, and that's what we're going to do. Now, there is a time to use that, but it's very, very rare. Now, let me tell you why we should rarely just pull the God card. God told me, and I've met people that everything is God told me this, God told me that, God told me this, God told me to brush my teeth, God told me to wear these jeans, God told me to wear this shirt, God told me to tell you, and they walk around and have a word for everybody, but they don't seem to do any of the words themselves, but that's a different podcast, but you're waiting for that one because you have a friend. I know you do. I have several. All right. So uh, let me tell you a couple reasons why I personally choose not to play the God card very often. Number one, it may not have been God. There are times I, I had an idea and I just thought, man, that's a great idea. And I really even felt God's hand on it. It just had a special touch. It could have just been pizza. It could have just been a great idea. And you know what? Not every idea does come from God. There is an enemy out there who can make you think, it was God, and and uh, he's blamed God for many things, and many people have done things in the name of God that were obviously not God. History played that out, so it may not have been God. Now, and also think about this. If, if I go to my staff and I go, hey, God told me we're going to do this, and that's how I lead every staff meeting— well, who in there is going to challenge me and t- that whether or not I hear from God? Who's going to go, boss, I really just don't know that you hear from God. You know, boss, can I challenge God today? They're not going to do that. So if I'm leading every meeting with God said, God said, God said, right off the bat, I've put an environment where my team and those around me can't share their opinion or dialogue or feedback on something or push against that particular idea because, man, they don't want to have the Absalom spirit and challenge God and they don't want to be that. So I tend to use these kinds of things. Hey, I had an idea. Hey, I was thinking about, hey, what do you all think? Oh, I I had a crazy idea. Uh, I like to use the term explore without commitment. Explore without commitment. Can we just try something? A lot of times we'll just go, hey, we're going to try this. Or, you know, and and this is a great principle here. When we're launching something at Element Church and we just aren't sure if it's a need uh, that, 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 you know, we need to create an event for or something ongoing systematic to meet, but we just want to try, often we'll just explore without commitment. We might do a one-time event, see what the feedback is, uh, see if it's meeting a need, see how we felt. We'll evaluate that. And we go, hey, that, that hit the mark. And man, that's really ministering to people. It's, it's helping us move the mission of the church down the field. Then you know what? Let's go ahead and continue that. But if we get up and launch everything with God said, we're going to do this. And God said, we're going to do that. Then we launch it and we realize, you know, we actually missed God on that one. Um, that, was, that was just a, an idea that we had. Um, then we lose credibility with people when we have to go back and go, you know what? We missed God. 
God on that one. So if I miss God, then what happens is I'm spending too much of my leadership trust change in my bank account. Every time we're making decisions as as leaders, you're spending a certain amount of trust that you have inside of your relational bank account with the people that you're leading. And there are just times that uh, if you miss it and you go, man, God said, you're going to lose a certain amount of change inside of the bank. The problem is if, if you lose enough, you will go bankrupt. We aren't the federal government as leaders that we can have a Federal Reserve print unlimited trust money for us. That does not exist. Only in fairyland does that exist. With leaders, when you spend your trust, you're bankrupt and you're probably going to be moving on. So be very careful how you're leveraging and using your trust. Um, When you make a decision, there's times that people are going to go, you know what? I don't understand that. I don't quite agree with that. But I'm going to trust you because of a certain amount of history that you've established of being trustworthy. You get that decision right. Change goes right back inside of the bank. But again, just be very careful how you're using that change. And another reason is this. It diminishes the fact when God did tell you something. So if everything is God told me this, God told me that, God told me that, then when God really did have a strong word, when God had a very specific, clear, concise direction for you, it's diminished among all the other God said that maybe wasn't God, and you were just using God's name and leveraging God to get your team to do things done because you didn't want them to argue with God, but really they didn't, you really just didn't want them to argue with you. Aesop's fable about the boy who cried wolf really just gives this as a great example. And again, there's just too many times if you cry wolf or you use the God said card, you're diminishing the times when it actually was God that did tell you to do something. So again, make when God said or God told me, make that special, make that more the rarity, not the every 30 minute norm inside of the organization you lead. Now, I want to read to you Luke chapter one and verse one through three. And this is the account of how the incredible gospel of Luke was written. Luke chapter 1, verse 1, "...inasmuch as many have taken in hand to set in order a narrative of those things which have been fulfilled among us, just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word delivered to them, it seemed good to me also." I'm going to say that again. "...it seemed good to me also, having perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write to you an orderly account, most excellent Theophilus." One of the most incredible gospels, one of the most incredible books in the New Testament was written not because thus saith the Lord. We don't see an angel waking Luke up going, write the gospel. He just had an idea and he goes, hey, it seemed good to me. I'm just going to do this. And he did it. And we have an incredible gospel. Now, we know that God inspired that. It is the inspired and fallible word of God, sharper than a two-edged sword. But it really began with a uh, It seemed good to me. Too many people just over-spiritualize the voice of God. If you see a need, meet it. If you have a good idea, do it. If you have a thought come to your mind to say a nice word to somebody, say it. Because you're really rarely ever going to go wrong doing something right. So many great things have come about, not just because it was God said, but it was simply a great idea, and they walked it out, and they took some practical steps, which that's what we're going to look at in our next podcast. We're going to look at three critical ways that God leads us forward. See you next week. Thank you for joining us on the All Out Leadership Podcast. We hope you gained new biblical insights that challenged you to grow in your leadership. If you've enjoyed this week's episode, we would love your help in getting the content out farther. You can help by subscribing to the podcast at ericlawson.com forward slash podcast and telling others about it. Next week, Pastor Eric will be back with another episode. So until then, we hope you have a great week being an all out leader.